Hi, I'm Frank Marone and welcome back to the Avid After School Sessions. This is our third and final session and I hope that they've been helpful in answering some of your questions. Our questions this week come from, the first one comes from Isaac Derfal and his question is, these days the internet is quite a common method of delivery for many filmmakers as well as television professionals. Do you find yourself making radical adjustments to your monitoring setup or to your template to accommodate this or does a good mix with your current setup translate well to the web without any major changes? What is some advice that you have for students in particular to help their mixes translate regardless of the playback medium? This is a really good question and if you're a first time, if you're just beginning to mix for 5.1, the best thing to do is take a 5.1 mix of your favorite movie and listen to it in different environments. Listen to it on a dub stage and listen to it with its full dynamic range. Listen to it through television speakers and listen to it through a laptop and that way that gives you some form of a reference point as to how it reacts to these different uh, delivery mediums. When I'm mixing in 5.1, I mix with full dynamic range. I make it sound as good as I can. That's what our focus is when we're mixing, is just to make the 5.1 sound as good as possible. Then I do a separate stereo mix where I will mix on smaller speakers and mix at a lower level and make my adjustments accordingly. Um, you'll find that the backgrounds tend to disappear and all the finer details of the mix tend to drop off. So I make those adjustments and uh, it, uh, it helps because it does relate to laptops and television systems and, and other mediums like uh, iPhones and iPods. The next question comes from Gerald Powell. He says, does room size matter when you're mixing? Well, it's not so much room size that matters, it's having a good calibrated room. All mixing rooms are calibrated to Dolby standards and it's important that you, that you have your room set up to this standard. I've done a lot of mixes in my home studio where I've taken them to bigger dub stages and it does relate. What I recommend, and it's not an expensive item, is just to buy a, a sound level meter and before you start any editing or you, set, you start your mix, just make sure that the room is calibrated again to Dolby standards and that you're always listening to a constant uh, reference level. And that way your ears learn to adjust and to relate to that reference level. Third question is, apart from our ears, how can we get a correct reference audio mix for our projects to sound like the pros? Which is one of the best methods to learn how to mix 5.1 surround? This question comes from Daniel Bravo Gonzalez. And it goes back to the previous question where uh, when you're mixing, it's important to have a calibrated room. And when you're mixing in 5.1, your mixing palette just has so much more flexibility. You've got six speakers to work with and you've got much more dynamic range and learning to mix in 5.1 uh, gives you a, a lot more creativity. How you treat the individual um, elements in that 5.1 mix really are artistic choices that you make, but there are some basic guidelines that you can go by. One of those guidelines is the dialogue should always be anchored in the center and uh, when you add in backgrounds they usually spread I, what I do is I'll spread them to the left center right and the surrounds the subwoofer is great if you have things like explosions just to extend the low end and give those explosions some punch when you're mixing in a film score another good guideline that I use is, is I start and put all of that music into all the speakers and then add a little bit of the subwoofer to accentuate and extend the low end on instruments like the cellos and the double basses. If it's, a, if it's a pop score, then I'll use it on the kick drums and the bass guitars. The sub is very useful for that. But 
you really, again, have to look at the artistic vision that you have for that picture and adjust accordingly. Uh, a good thing to do is, again, take one of your favorite films and listen to it in 5.1 and listen to what's been done in all of the individual speakers, where things have been placed, what choices were made uh, as to put what sounds where, and it gives you a good starting point. The next question is, what, what is your favorite mic for vocals? And this question comes from Damon Zakaitis. And really, I've, I've collected a lot of good mics over the years. My go-to mic for vocals is always a Neumann U87. It's uh, a great sounding microphone and really works for most of the things that, most of the vocals that I like to record. But there are certain characteristics in certain vocalists that may be better suited to other microphones. So I'm always experimenting. And I have a lot of other go-to microphones like the Audio-Technica 4050, which is a very clear and transparent mic, and a Sennheiser 416 is what I call the Swiss Army knife of all microphones because I've used it on Foley. It's great. It's a boom mic, but it sounds really, really good when you're recording vocals and voiceovers with that particular mic. So again, the key is experimentation and uh, seeing what really, uh, what really works with different vocalists. So I want to thank everybody for participating in these after school series. I'd like to thank AVID for giving us a forum to answer your questions. And um, I wish everybody much success and good luck with your careers.